800 years ago, a wealthy Italian merchant named Francesco Bernardone sold all that he had, put on a sackcloth and rope, and began serving the lepers. For many people, this was nothing more than the working of a crazy person, an insignificant event in history. But there was something different about this man, a radiance about him. His love for God and humble life began attracting other men, and before he knew it, the most influential order in the history of the church was born, the Franciscans. Don't believe me? Here are just 22 of our contributions to the church and world that have changed history. Let's start right off with the name Francis itself. A popular enough name today, St. Francis of Assisi was actually the first person in recorded history to take that name. Actually baptized John, his father gave him the nickname Francesco, or Frenchy, after his many trips to France. Think that's unbelievable? Then what about the fact that St. Francis's Canticle of the Creatures is believed to be the very first work of literature written in the Italian language? Students in Italian schools study it for its historical significance. If you're like me and love nativity scenes during Advent and Christmas, you have St. Francis to thank for that. In 1223, he wished to experience the birth of Christ as it would have been, and so he set up the very first reenactment. Being that the Franciscans were already quite large at the time, ministering all throughout Europe, the practice spread quickly. The same can be said of the Stations of the Cross. Although we technically didn't invent it, we did popularize it, and the reason you celebrate it today is because of Franciscans. Witnessing the ancient practice on his trip to the Holy Land, Francis brought the devotion back to Europe with such force that people believed that we had come up with it. It was very much our prayer. For centuries, we were the only ones allowed to erect and bless stations at a church. St. Francis' devotion to the Holy Land was, in fact, truly profound, which is why a custody of the order was founded there as early as 1217, and the Franciscans were declared the official custodians of the Holy Places in 1342. If you've ever been to the Holy Land, we're everywhere. But really, we're everywhere. Within only a few years of our founding, Franciscans were found in nearly every European country, beginning missions to Africa and Asia as well. The reason for this? We were the first order in church history to include an insistence on mission in our official rule. Which has led us into some crazy situations over the years, like that time we literally saved Poland and Hungary from being conquered by the Mongols. Hearing word of a possible invasion, two friars, Lawrence of Portugal and John Pien del Carpine, were sent as ambassadors to the Tartar Empire with a papal declaration of peace. The declaration was unfortunately rejected, but they returned with such intimate knowledge of the inner workings of the empire and its army that they actually planned the military's defense, and it worked. A few centuries later, we were among the first religious to travel to the Americas, founding much of the South and West of the United States. You could probably guess that we named the missions of San Francisco, Santa Clara, and San Antonio, but did you know that the full name of Los Angeles is actually El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora, La Reina de los Ángeles Sobre la Porcioncla de Assis, the town of Our Lady, the Queen of Angels of the Porcioncla of Assisi. The same goes for Santa Fe, known fully as La Villa Real de la Santa Fe de San Francisco de Assis. Ever see the movie The Mission? Well, there may not have been any friars in that movie, but after the Jesuits were killed and expelled, the Franciscans were sent in to salvage the mess and continue to serve there even today. Speaking of that, it was actually Pope Clement XIV, a Franciscan who suppressed the Jesuits. So, you're welcome. Also, we're deeply sorry about that, and please, Pope Francis, don't suppress us. With all this travel, praying like monks in monasteries simply wasn't possible. But Francis wanted the brothers to keep praying the office, they needed to be able to take the large book of Psalms with them where they went. Hence, the breviary, invented by the Franciscans in 1223. This was by no means our only invention. Roger Bacon was the first European to develop gunpowder, no doubt a result of being a pioneer in the development of the scientific method. The Dies Irae, a Latin sequence popularly used today in movies and television and scenes of horror and sadness, and we've been associating them with death for almost 800 years. Yeah, that was actually a Requiem hymn written by Thomas of Celano, Franciscan friar and first biographer of St. Francis. 
Luca Pacioli, a Franciscan of the 15th century, revolutionized business operations with the development of the double-entry accounting method, a method that has remained nearly unchanged in business for more than 500 years, garnering him the title the father of accounting and bookkeeping. Believe it or not, he was not the only friar involved in business, as the Franciscans were the original inventors of what would eventually become pawn shops. Beginning as charitable businesses where the poor could get low-interest loans, the friars nearly eliminated usury in Europe and facilitated the invention of modern banking. In some cases, our reputation and existence alone was enough to spark innovation, as things like the Cappuccino and Capuchin Monkey were named because of their resemblance to Capuchin Franciscans. A bit less endearing would be the dunce cap, a pejorative term used against John Duns Scotus and his followers, who were known to wear pointy hats. Some have suggested that this style of headwear inspired popular images of witches and wizards as well, although some dispute both etymologies. Regardless, Dunscotus was definitely attacked in his time, but ultimately had the last laugh, as it was his argument for the Immaculate Conception, refuting Thomas Aquinas' argument that was accepted by the Church. Franciscans were so ubiquitous in the Middle Ages that many can't even think of medieval life without us in it. The story of Robin Hood includes the character Friar Tuck, even though the story took place before the Franciscans were even founded. Of course, the Franciscan charism doesn't just consist of the friars, but also includes many communities of men and women inspired by Francis' life, and so it's worth remembering that the Mayo Clinic, one of the most influential academic medical centers in the world, was founded by Franciscan sisters. That's a fact. It's also a fact that Dante, Petrarch, Michelangelo, Raphael, Luigi Galvani, Luis Pastor, and Christopher Columbus were secular Franciscans. So basically, you have the Franciscans to thank for the Divine Comedy, the Sistine Chapel, the School of Athens, discovering bioelectromagnetics, inventing pasteurization, and, oh, discovering America. So yeah, you're welcome. But if that isn't enough, we return to the beginning of the charism, where we find arguably the most popular Franciscan for religious and secular alike, a man that even non-churchgoers pray to when they lose their keys, St. Anthony of Padua. Dear St. Anthony, please come around. Something is lost that cannot be found. So, yeah, you're welcome, world. St. Francis once said to the brothers, let us begin again, because up till now, we have done nothing. While this may have been true 800 years ago, it's certainly not the case today. Little did he know what he might inspire men and women to do, and who knows what we've got up our sleeve for the next 800 years. Maybe our best contribution is yet to come, and maybe you're the one to bring it. If you've never considered becoming a Franciscan, maybe now is the time to pray about it and see where God is calling you.